Okay, hi everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with News and Views from the Nefarium on Thursday, April 5th, 2012. We're still in the year of the apocalypse, and so far, no apocalypse yet, but uh, for some people, including me, it's looking like it might be getting close. Anyway, sorry about my sinus folks, but it uh, seems to be an ongoing problem. But um, first, before I get started, uh, I do want to say thank you to everybody that's been signing up for memberships on the website and for your donations, especially that dear lady, you know who you are. Thank you very much. And um, for all those making comments on, on comments, uh, I also appreciate that as well because I don't often have time to go through and look at all the comments and respond to all of them. So I do appreciate all of that as well. I am, as you can tell from the pile of books back behind me, I'm still hard at work on the sequel to Babylon's Banksters, which brings me to the subject <laughs> of today's little uh, news and views. This is an article once again from the Daily Bell, and it plays directly, as a matter of fact, into the sequel I'm writing to Babylon's Banksters. And it has to deal with the tragedy, the, the sad news, that the Greek pharmacist Demetrius Christoulos committed suicide and left a suicide note regarding the austerity measures that are being imposed upon Greece by the European Central Banks, by the European Union. But there are some things in this article, and I will link it on the website so that you can actually read this article, that I want to draw your attention to and uh, comment upon. The article is entitled, Rebellion Spreads, EU Elites Have Miscalculated? And that's a question. But the article states a couple of interesting things. The first thing it says that is that the internet revolution that's going on has forced the elites to move up their timetable for globalization, putting into place a world government, and so on and so forth, rather considerably. And they go back in the article to point out something that they've mentioned before, that in fact I'll be mentioning in the sequel to Babylon's Banksters. And that is this, quote, there is something analogous to the appearance use of Martin Luther and John Calvin to split the Catholic Church long ago. There is even some anecdotal evidence of support for Oliver Cromwell and his activities in deposing British royalty for a generation." Unquote. Now what the Daily Bell is suggesting here is something very crucial and I talk about this in the, the sequel that I'm writing to Babylon's Banksters. And that is, during the first information revolution, which was the appearance of the movable type printing press in Europe that made possible the dissemination of not only the Bible, but commentaries on the Bible, philosophical works, and so on and so forth throughout Europe. And that, in their opinion, in the Daily Bell's opinion, the elites of the period and I do believe they mean the financial elites, not the religious elites, but the hidden oligarchical financial elites of Europe. And when I say oligarchical financial elites, I'm thinking in terms of the research of, of Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, which we'll get back to in a moment. The oligarchical elites, in the Daily Bell's opinion, deliberately fostered and created the Protestant Reformation to gain or regain control over the religious impulses of the day and to channel it back into themes and means that they had influence and control over. And the reason that this is an important point is because of something else they say in this article. The elites did not desire a renaissance, nor did they desire a new world or small Republican United States, all right, unquote. This is another very insightful comment. They don't explain very much as to why they're saying that, but I'm going to attempt to. 
If we look at two things here, the Renaissance was actually, if you study it very carefully, and I will again be talking about the Renaissance at great length in the sequel to Babylon's Banksters, because the philosophical impetus behind the Renaissance, particularly in northern Italy, and this is, this is really the crucial point here, the philosophical impetus behind the Renaissance was one of Hermeticism and broadly speaking, Neoplatonism. And for many Italian Renaissance humanists of the period, people like Tommaso Campanella and Giordano Bruno, I'm thinking chiefly of those two, but there were many others, Hermeticism became a kind of alternative to Christianity. All right, And of course, Bruno is coming at the very, very end of this whole period. Uh, if we turn back the clock to, say, the 15th century, you find figures like Pico de Mirandola and so on and so forth who are playing or hinting at the fact that Hermeticism would be an alternative not only to Catholic Christianity but to Protestant Christianity. In other words, they were keenly aware of that metaphor, that Trinitarian topological metaphor that I've discussed in so many of my books as being something that was present not specifically because of Christianity, but because of certain very specific philosophical and, in my opinion, ultimately mathematical reasons. So these people were opening up the bottle. They were challenging the elites. The elite at this juncture, and if you're not familiar with the work of Webster Griffin Tarpley, which I will be discussing in the book I'm writing, but certainly I'm not trying to give away the book, folks, so don't worry about that because I'm going to go way beyond anything that Dr. Tarpley writes about. But you need to familiarize yourself with a work by Dr. Tarpley called Against Oligarchy. It's actually online. You can go online and read this work. It's all about Venice and the financial oligarchy of Venice. Now, Tarpley makes a very, very interesting and good case that it is this oligarchy that is behind, or at least trying to influence, the division of Europe into Protestant and Catholic camps and to create wars out of it. And he's quite right, and the Daily Bell is quite right, when it points out that this elite did not want the Renaissance because the topological metaphor that I've talked about so many times is a direct challenge to the financial thinking, to the financial cosmology, as it were, of those oligarchical elites. Now, I'll leave it to you to think about why that's the case. I'll be arguing that case at, at some length in the sequel to Babylon's Banksters. But the other thing that the Daily Bell is pointing out is that this elite did not want the new world either. And the reason why is very important. If you're an Italian city-state, like Genoa, Padua, Florence, Venice, and so on, you are dependent upon trade in Europe and trade with the Middle East, which in turn depends on trade to the Far East. All right. So they're interested in keeping their trading monopolies. They're interested in keeping the status quo of the system. What the New World did in its discovery and backing, particularly by Spain, what that did was it broke open the bottle. It was, in other words, a closed system versus an open system once again. And if you go back to Babylon's Banksters, I was trying to argue the case that there is a direct link between closed systems of finance and closed systems of physics and open systems of finance and open systems of physics. Open systems are inevitably challenging to oligarchical elites, and this, I think, is what the Daily Bell is getting at here in the short statement. Now they go on to say something very, very interesting in this article, and they're citing Ambrose Evans Pritchard, the journalist for the London uh, Times. And Pritchard has this to say, quote, this event, the suicide of Demetrius Christoulas, has happened, and such events have consequences. The structure of monetary union is the root cause of this deepening crisis. In other words, it's the euro itself and the attempt to impose austerity measures on the nations of Southern Europe in order to stabilize the currency, the euro. All right, That's what they're getting at here. 
The structure of monetary union is the root cause of this deepening crisis since it shuts off the usual solutions, the policy mix of fiscal and monetary contraction underway simultaneously in countries containing 140 million people is making it even worse. Much hope is being placed on belt tightening and on root and branch reforms that will take five to ten years to bear fruit. Mr. Christoulas has alerted Europe that civil society will not wait. Then the Daily Bell goes on to comment on Evans Pritchard's remarks as follows. It is a process, not an episode. It will not likely be stilled, redirected, or ameliorated. And the Daily Bell's conclusion is very interesting. The elites do not sleep well at night either. And I think in this respect, this suicide, tragic though it was, is pointing out exactly what the Daily Bell is pointing out. You have measures being imposed on nations in Europe, particularly Greece, with a long tradition of democracy and with a long tradition of civil unrest and disobedience. The Greeks, let's recall, were in the forefront of resistance to the Nazis during World War II. And the same we have to really say for Italy, for Spain, for Portugal, for these countries that are feeling this, the velvet glove of European Union central authority. I don't think that the elites calculated this well, so I'm in agreement with the Daily Bell. I think you're going to see more of this. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I think you will see attempts to clamp down on it, but right now it's anybody's guess as to where all this is going. But the bottom line is this, my friends. We're dealing again with oligarchical interests that cannot think outside of their closed system. And the internet has come along and broken open the bottle. And the other problems are, as, as many of you know, that there are new technologies coming online. The, the recent cold fusion experiments of Dr. Andrea Rossi in Italy seem to show some promise. And that, of course, would be yet another system opener that would challenge in a very fundamental way the energy and dollar monopoly that these oligarchs have put into place within the last 100 years. So anyway, this is a story well, well worth watching, my friends, and uh, again, I appreciate everybody's donations, your, your prayers, especially that dear lady, and, and your comments and your support. Um, I, I truly do appreciate that, and I'll see everybody on the flip side. God bless everyone.